Welcome everyone. Um, I've been looking at aquatic plants, I've had a particular interest in aquatic plants and vegetation for over 30 years. And during that time, I've seen uh, quite considerable changes to the aquatic flora. Uh, what I've also found uh, is that people in general are quite scared of aquatic plants. Uh, many of them don't have very showy flowers. Uh, and they often have a reputation of being quite difficult. Uh, this is not uh, always fair. Some, some, some bits are difficult, um, but uh, uh, the, this is one of a number of webinars and, and workshops uh, being organized by the Botanical Society of Britain and Ireland uh, with funding from the National Plants and Wildlife Service to try and address uh, and uh, hopefully make uh, these uh, these aquatic plant groups are a little bit more accessible. Um, today we are talking about uh, bladderworts, uh, the genus Utricularia. Uh, they're in the, uh, a family in the Lentibulariaceae, uh, along with butterworts, another uh, group of uh, carnivorous plants. Uh, but the bladderworts are free floating, uh, they don't have any roots. Uh, and they have yellow flowers, at, at least in Britain and Ireland. There are other colors uh, in other parts of the world. Um, and they get their nutrition by digesting invertebrates and small bladder-like structures, um, which we'll look at a little bit more closely late, later. Um, uh, unfortunately, uh, they don't flower all that well. Um, and uh, it, you have to be often quite lucky to, uh, to see flowers, particularly the further north and west that you get. Uh, so a lot of the time you're left with picking up um, uh, bits from, uh, of vegetated plants uh, grow, growing in under the water. Uh, and so just a, a few pointers to so that you know that it is a bladderwort. Uh, and essentially the, the, the most obvious thing is that they produce these, these little bladder, uh, which are the insect eating uh, parts of the plant uh, in amongst the leaves. Uh, they're there in most, in most cases, um, there are a few cases where you won't see those. Uh, so the other things to look out for are uh, that they have alternate leaves, so they're staggered uh, up and down the stem. Uh, they, uh, the way the leaf divides is a, it's a sort of halfway between a, a sort of dichotomous tuning fork type division uh, and a sort of pinnate type division. You'll see that uh, it, they, they split uh, a bit like tuning forks, but there's always one, uh, one of the, the branches that's stronger than the rest. So it, it's a sort of, uh, unequal uh, uh, tuning fork type uh, division. Um, they have bristles on the tips of the leaves and often also on little teeth on the edges, which are quite distinctive. Um, and of course the, the bladders. Um, just to uh, things that you might uh, confuse them with. The other groups of aquatic plants with alternate uh, staggered uh, complex divided leaves are uh, ranunculus, uh, but here you can see that the, the way that the leaves divide are uh, equal forks um, rather than this une unequal forks that you get in bladderworts. Uh, and in things like the uh, water dropworts and, and marshwort, uh, you get, uh, at least initially, this pinnate uh, division of the leaves. So that sort of combination, and they should, they're usually quite easily, uh, particularly with the bladders, uh, you can get to sort of uh, recognize quite easily that, that it's going to be a bladderwort. Um, Books wise, there are issues in virtually all the books. Um, uh, mainly it's relating to some of the characters, uh, some of the larger uh, macroscopic vegetative characters, which uh, are, give the impression 
uh, uh, of uh, they they make them sound as though they're good, reliable characters when most of them aren't. Uh, but probably the best uh, treatments uh, subject to that that issue are in the Plant Crib, um, which is a book produced by Botanical Society of Britain and Ireland, and then the new flora that's uh, Stacey's flora of, of the British Isles. Um, there is, uh, in the, on the Aquatic Plants website, there are a number of keys uh, which uh, I produced over the years. Uh, they're designed to be uh, on A4, so you can laminate them and take them out in the field. Uh, and uh, they, you can have, a, if you go to the uh, Aquatic Plants website on the SBI Islands pages, uh, you'll find a whole set of keys for all sorts of different aquatic plant groups. Uh, also, another one that I would recommend, particularly for, uh, there are some really amazing photographs, uh, and that's the carnivorous plants. Um, uh, there are some really excellent pictures of, uh, uh, particularly the flowers, which you won't find uh, at most places elsewhere. Uh, if you're more dedicated, there are a couple of uh, uh, books and papers which uh, uh, have been quite important. Uh, one by Peter Taylor, which is a world monograph of, of utricularia. Uh, uh, and also of note is this uh, paper by Goran Thor, in the Nordic Journal of Botany, uh, which separates Utricular Stygia from Ocheruca. Uh, in, in Taylor's approach, these two species are united under Ocheruca. And that has caused some problems with, uh, with the records. Um, so this, this is the place to get the detail of the separation of Stygia from Ocheruca. So there are six or seven species that have been recorded from Britain and Ireland, and they fit uh, very nicely into three groups, um, three aggregate groups, uh, and separation of those aggregate groups is really easy. No problem at all. It's when you get into the segregates of the groups that things get a little bit more complicated. Um, so if we just have a look at those aggregates, uh, the, uh, the, the first thing that you look at is that Utricularia minor uh, doesn't have any uh, teeth on the edges of the leaves. You just have these pointed tips. Whereas in both of the other groups, the intermediate ag and vulgaris ag, there are these uh, teeth on the sides of the leaves, uh, which uh, have these little spiky, uh, spiny tips to them. Uh, sometimes you have to be a bit careful with minus as if this branch of the uh, of, of the leaf was very short, it can look uh, in certain circumstances like a tooth if, if it was sort of extended to about here. Uh, but uh, it, it, you then just check the rest of the leaf and there's no other signs of, uh, of teeth on the side. So if it doesn't have any teeth, then utricularia minor. That, that's really easy. And the separation between the, the, these two other groups uh, is that in the intermediate ag, you have uh, the separation between the bladders, which are on colorless stems, and those actually tend to sink into the mud and, and feed on things in the mud. And then on the surface, you'll get these green leaves, which don't have any bladders, or sometimes you can find one or two small bladders uh, but essentially, there's this separation between the colourless uh, shoots with, with the bladders and the green shoots without bladders. Whereas in the vulgaris ag, the bladders are all mixed up amongst the green leaves. And you don't have any separate colourless stems. Um, another feature that separates those two aggregates uh, is that the intermediate group uh, have flattened leaf leaf segments, uh, whereas those on the uh, vulgaris group, uh, they're, they're much uh, narrower, sort of capillary 
uh, cylindrical incidence section. Um, uh, so that's a, a, an extra an extra tip you can for separating them. Um, now I said that flowers are are quite unusual. They do occur particularly in, in some groups, um, and if you have flowers then they're much uh, the, the best thing to use. Uh, and uh, particularly in the Vulgaris and Australis group, they are really the only reliable character. Uh, so what you're looking for between Vulgaris and Australis, which is the, the two species in the Vulgaris aggregate, uh, is uh, whether the lower lip, uh, you see in Australis, the lower lip is sort of uh, flat, and face on to you, uh, whereas in Vulgaris, the lower lip is bent round the sides like a, like a skirt. Um, I, I suppose if you're thinking orchid-wise, uh, this would be Orchis incarnata, Dactylorhiza incarnata, whereas this would be Dactylorhiza erisitorum. Uh, basically the, the same feature where uh, incarnata, the uh, uh, the lower lip is bent backwards, it sort of reflex the back. Uh, the other character that's that's useful uh, in the for separating these two is if you look in the spur. Now the spur is this uh, uh, tube at the back of the, uh, underneath the lower lip, um, and it, and it's a sort of cylindrical uh, petal, I suppose, um, uh, and uh, if if you look inside the spur, you'll find little uh, glandular bumps, uh, and the arrangements of those are, are different between the two species. Uh, this one, they sort of go all the way around the, the end of the spur, whereas in Bulgaris, they're, they're just uh, on one side. Um, and to show some pictures of those, here we got Bulgaris, and you can see that this lower lip is bent backwards round around the size of the flower uh, compared to uh, Australis, where you can see that this this lower lip is flat and and sort of face on to you if you're looking at the front of the flower. Um, in the intermediate group, the intermediate group is much the rarest of the flowers. It, it flowers very, very rarely. I have only seen it flowering maybe twice in the 30, 40 years I've been looking at aquatic plants. Um, and uh, I think somebody said that they, it may be flowering a little better this year. I think the, the dry weather that we've been having does encourage flowering. Um, so if you do have flowers, then uh, they, ca they can be useful. And what you're looking for is, is the length of the spur. You can see just protruding here, and this is much shorter in the other two. And the actual shape of the flower is a bit different uh, as well as to whether this lower lip is flat or it's uh, bent round the sides. Uh, similar in a bit to the sort of Australis and Vulgaris um, comparison, whether it's got a flat lower lip or, or it's bent round at the sides. Um, but you're very lucky if you f actually find flowers. Um, uh, this is uh, this group uh, very extremely rare that it flowers. Uh, and the minor um, the, there is, uh, which I haven't really talked about before, uh, Utricularia bremii. Uh, I haven't talked about it because there is only one uh, record that that's been reliably confirmed as this, and it's in the New Forest uh, in Hampshire. Um, as far as we know, all the other sort of minor groups are Utricularia minor. And what you're looking at again it is that the lower lip is bent around the sides uh, in minor, whereas in Bremii, uh, it's a much rounder lower, lower lip uh, and it's flat. Um, so if you do have flowers uh, and it's minor, do have a, a look out for a sort of flat uh, uh, edge uh, and rounder uh, lower lip. 
because uh, you never know. It, we only know about the one record at the moment, uh, but it might it, it might be being overlooked. Now you will in the in various books you will see a number of uh, macro vegetative characters. Uh, uh, mainly the, these ones where the, the leaf tips are obtuse or acute, uh, the amount of, of teeth on each bristle, uh, the number of, um, uh, uh, sorry, the, so that's the height of the tooth, uh, the number of uh, teeth, uh, bristles on each tooth, uh, the number of leaf teeth, whether the leaves are pinnate or palmate, um, dimensions of the, of the leaves and stem uh, and the presence of any bladders uh, on the green leaves. Uh, the problem with these is that none of them are reliable. Um, so uh, despite what it says in a number of the books, you're best not to do any identifications based on these characters. Um, uh, there may be one or two things that might be indicative, but the, 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 the characters are so gray and so variable that you just cannot uh, use them reliably. Uh, just as an example of this, this is uh, uh, a, a picture of a leaf of Utricularia intermedia, uh, Sen strict, uh, uh, and uh, which has been confirmed from, from other features, the, the bladder features. Um, and this is supposed to uh, have uh, obtuse leaf tips, uh, but you can see here that the, the leaf tips are actually quite acute and typical. Um, the other thing is that the, uh, the aggregate, the intermediate aggregate, uh, are often the leaves are described as being palmate. Uh, and, but if you actually look at these leaves, uh, they are this, just the same as in all the other utricularias. You've got these forks with one of the forks being much stronger than the, the, than the other. Uh, and it's the same, uh, albeit in sl slightly more contracted form, as the arrangement of uh, uh, all, all the other bladderwort things. So just examples of, of these characters which have been sort of repeated and repeated, but actually are not terribly useful. Um, so we now come to the, the bladders. Uh, now, the, the way the bladders work is, is that uh, through osmosis, the, the plant reduces pressure inside the bladder. Uh, and uh, at, at, at one end of the bladder, there is this little trap door. Um, and around it are trigger hairs. And along comes a little Daphnia or some other invertebrate, and it hits the trigger hairs, releases the trap door. There's a rush of water that, that takes the, the, the little beastie into the bladder, uh, and uh, inside the bladder, it gets digested down uh, and it absorbs the nutrients. Now, inside the bladder, there are, uh, you can sort of see them, but I'll, I'll show another picture in a moment. Uh, there are these hairs, uh, and these hairs, uh, for the next slide, uh, this is a electron microscope, uh, um, scanning electron microscope picture, and you can see that there, there are these hairs inside. Uh, in truth, they're actual glands, they secrete uh, enzymes which help digest the plant, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, invertebrate. Um, but they're also, um, they tend to be pointed. So we've got the trap door here. Uh, the, the, the longer hairs point away from the trap door, uh, which probably makes it more difficult for the little beastie inside to work its way back out, um, to push against the, uh, the hairs. Now, botanists being what botanists do, they worked out that the different species have different arrangements of hairs. Um, so it's not an easy character, this, but it is a, a, a helpful character uh, if you look at the arrangements of, of these hairs. Uh, and if you open up the bladder and look at these, these, these hairs, this is what they look like. Uh, 
Uh, they're uh, arranged in fours uh, with two longer hairs and two slightly shorter hairs. Um, and um, uh, you, you probably need a compound microscope or some of the digital microscopes uh, uh, could, uh, should be big enough to, because uh, uh, times 100 is about the, uh, the best magnification. Um, but you do need underneath light, which is a problem with some of the, the digital microscopes. Um, but uh, uh, you don't need staining, but uh, you'll see in the slides that are following that, that uh, uh, Claudia uh, uh, ferguson Smythe, who's taken a lot of these pictures, uh, has put a stain on it and it just makes them easier to see. But you don't actually need to have the stain, it just, just helps the contrast. Um, and what you're looking at in, in these is, is particularly this angle here between the, the two shorter arms uh, of, of, uh, of, of the four. Uh, and you can see in the different species, uh, the, uh, so you've got intermediate here where the, the shorter arms are more or less parallel, uh, and then Stygia, the, the, they're wider apart, uh, and in Ocaruca, they're even wider. Uh, a minor, they're, they're bent right round and, and are, are pointing in the same direction as, as, the, uh, uh, as the longer hairs. Um, so uh, there are some, some quite uh, useful differences here. Uh, there are also, uh, if you actually look at the ratio between the short hairs and the, and the long hairs, um, the intermediate group all have more equal hairs than the uh, in the Valgaris group. So even there are times when for some reason, if you don't have a very good specimen um, uh, and it's a bit difficult to see whether there are bladders mixed with the green leaves uh, or, or for some other problem, you can always confirm that it is a Valgaris egg by looking at the hairs and seeing that the uh, much longer, the, the, the long hairs are much longer than the short hairs, then it, it takes you to the Valgaris egg. Um, so uh, here's some examples. Uh, here, this is uh, one, and you can see particularly here that, that there are, the long hairs are really quite long compared to the short hairs. Um, whereas in, in this one, which is in the in, intermediate group, the uh, hairs are much more equal the shorter hairs are, are only a little shorter than, than the long hairs. Um, I'll go back up a second. Um, just to say that unfortunately in the Valgaris group, the, there is so much overlap between the, uh, the angles between Valgaris and Australis that you can't reliably separate the two species. Uh, from the hair. So the Valgaris group, you do need to have flowers to separate the, the, the two segregates. Um, but it's particularly useful in, in the intermediate group, uh, particularly because the intermediate group flowers so, so, inter, uh, so rarely um, that the, the, they're most useful, these uh, characters of the hairs. Uh, and here's a, a, a picture of Stygia. Uh, and you can see that the shorter hairs are, are they, they tend to form almost a cross with the, with the longer hairs, whereas in intermediate sense of strict two, the, the uh, hairs are more or less parallel. So you've got the two shorter ones here and the two longer ones, and the, there's hardly any angle between them. Um, Okraluka, I don't have pictures of because I'm not entirely sure that we actually have Ocaruca in Britain and Ireland. Uh, but uh, this angle between the short hairs would be much wider, sort of getting on to towards uh, sort of, uh, over 135 degrees or sometimes almost 180 degrees. Um, and there's a picture of minor, and you can see that in minor, uh, all the hairs are, are more or less pointing in the one direction. You don't have the shorter hairs pointing uh, opposed to the, um, to the longer hairs. Uh, 
Uh, also minor tends to be smaller, but uh, uh, minor is not usually a problem because uh, the, the, the lack of leaf teeth uh, means that you don't really have to, to look at the bladders uh, to, to separate minor. So it, it's a fiddly business to, to do this. Um, uh, and uh, just a, a, a few tips. Uh, the bladders need to be mature, uh, otherwise the hairs are not sort of properly formed. So the best thing is to look for the largest bladders that you have available. Uh, but also they, the hairs are quite easily damaged by animals. Uh, uh, and you can tell if, the, if the, the bladder has been feeding because they go black with the, the, the bits, leftover bits of the, uh, of the invertebrate. Um, so you're looking for the most translucent uh, of the bladders uh, to, to, as good ones to, to look for the hairs on. Um, and uh, there are ways, different ways of approaching this. Um, uh, the way I like to do it um, is to uh, make a sort of slice uh, along this, this long keel and then open it up. Uh, but leave this this side in, in, in intact. So you you put you put a, a bladder on its side uh, on a uh, on a, on a slide uh, and get a sort of a scalpel blade and just do a cut uh, across this long um, uh, side and just open up the two halves um, and uh, sort of a bit like a butterfly. Um, because one of the things that isn't mentioned in most of the books is that it's very important to look in the middle of the, of the face of the bladder. Uh, what they don't tell you is that if you get, if you look, start looking towards the edges of the bladder, particularly the long keel, they start getting narrow, the angles get smaller. Um, and if you start looking at the short keel, the angles get bigger. So it's really important I can't stress this too much, that you look in the middle of the face. Um, and so it's important that when you cut open the bladder, that you know where the middle of the face is. Uh, and if you cut it open by, uh, by sort of slicing it along the long uh, keel, then you know that uh, each half of the butterfly, you're, you're looking in the middle of the face to, to see the uh, 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 middle of the wings of, of the butterfly to to have the middle of the face. Um, uh, if you have pickled material, uh, sometimes they're not, when they're in the pickled material, they're not quite as turgid. Um, but if you put them in water, that will in, improve the turgidity in, um, for, for a, a little while, and you can still make quite a, an easy cut with the scalpel and, and do the same thing. But you have to be careful uh, because the hairs are, are quite easily uh, scuffed off. Um, so you, you need to do the, do it quite carefully and open them up uh, without, without as much as possible scraping the inner surface of the blood. Um, another way of doing it uh, is to actually just make four cuts. Um, so you put it on the side and just sort of, uh, rather than uh, cutting sort of uh, parallel to the, to the uh, the long sides, uh, sorry, to, to the, the faces, uh, you actually cut across the faces and, and you end up with a, a square uh, piece. And again, you just pull them, pull apart the two pieces uh, and you're left with, uh, again, the, the middle of the face here um, uh, to, to look at the bladder hairs. Um, as I say, you don't need to stain, but the uh, uh, it, it does help to improve the contrast, particularly if you're taking pictures. Um, uh, and uh, these are probably the best uh, uh, stains to use. Uh, so uh, methylene blue or, or cotton blue. Um, and that they're fairly inexpensive. Um, so uh, unfortunately, the uh, there are a number of problems in the database, in the, the SBI's database uh, uh, for, for bladder records. But uh, so 
the for if um, uh, the record, recording the aggregates is not a problem. Uh, they're quite easy to separate. Uh, there are no particular issues, um, and uh, so recording to the aggregate is, is, is no problem at all. Uh, it's when you're going a bit further uh, that uh, it gets a little bit more complicated. Uh, for minor, rather less so because Bromi I is, is so, so so extremely rare. And really, you can assume uh, that it's unitary or minor unless proven otherwise. So. Uh, minor just record as minor as have to record it as, as minor aggregates. For intermediate group, uh, you need to use the quadrifid hairs, or if you're lucky enough to find flowers, then of course you can do do that. But but really, most of the time you're uh, looking at these these quadrifid hairs, uh, and it is worth uh, in in the database when you're making a record to to comment that you have checked the hairs, uh, just because of the problems that there has been confusion in the past and, and some of the old records, it's difficult to interpret. Uh, did, did they know what they were looking at? But if you say on it, I checked the hairs, then you know that they, the, the recorder knew what they were doing um, and you can trust the record. Um, uh, in the Valgaris group, uh, you need the uh, flowers for identification. Um, uh, so, and again, it's worth commenting that you you have seen flowers, uh, just to, to make, it means that it adds it adds weight to the record. And in truth, because the uh, area minor is, is is probably the most common flower, uh, but even that is it's quite unusual, and you only get it in certain conditions. So, I'd actually say. It's worth recording whether they're whether it's a flowering colony, uh, because an awful lot of the time, uh, even minor, you're recording from just vegetative material. Um, and as I say, the, the maps of the aggregates are uh, reasonably good, uh, and they show uh, that, uh, as you would expect, that the bladderworts do like the the peatier areas. Um, uh, so, particularly in the uplands and, the, and, and to the west. Um, Bulgaris is the one that extends most widely, uh, particularly in, in England here. There's quite a lot of it in the Fens and <coughs> East Anglia and, uh, and the southeast, uh, which, which uh, whereas the other two are quite rare in, uh, in southeastern England. Um, uh, uh, and minor also, both Aunt Minor and Vulgaris are sort of not infrequent in Central Ireland, um, uh, but for the most part, uh, the, it's the uh, intermediate group is, is particularly Western uh, in its distribution. Um, so, the, as, so we've got, of the seven species, we've got minor, which is uh, fairly frequent, uh, usually in acidic conditions. Um, in the intermediate group, by far the most common is utricular astygium. Uh, and it's fairly frequent, uh, particularly in the West, uh, and uh, it is, pretty, is usually in acidic conditions. Um, utricularis australis and vulgaris are uh, more frequent. Um, uh, and uh, of the two, I think that Australis is, is, is more common. Uh, it's also the one that's, that's usually in acidic water, whereas Vulgaris is uh, maybe even restricted to calcareous water. So it's, a, it's the one that you tend to expect more often in calcareous fen situations, whereas if you're coming across it in a, an acid lake, um, then probably it's more likely to be Australis. But of course, unless it's got the flowers, it's, it's, it's difficult to confirm this. But uh, the, the, from, from what we have from flowering material, it looks like that Australis is the widespread one and Vulgaris is much more localized, mainly because calcareous beauty conditions are, are, are less common. Um, 
Uh, and the other three are uh, uh, extremely rare or possibly don't exist at all. Ocraluca, I don't know if it has actually been confirmed for, for British Britain and Ireland. Uh, it could occur, there's no reason why it shouldn't, it's in Scandinavia. Um, but, but if you look on the database, there are actually quite a lot of records uh, from Ocraluca, and most of them date from a time when Stygia was not differentiated as a species. So uh, at that time, it was a sort of Ocraluca ang, or Ocraluca stroke Stygia, um, because Stygia was not recognized. <coughs> um, so uh, uh, if anybody finds a convincing material of Ocraluca, then it's well worth sending it to the referee to get confirmation. Similarly, into media, sense and strict to, uh, in Britain, as far as we know, there are only two records, uh, one in the Norfolk Broads, uh, uh, another site in the New Forest. Uh, so it should be red listed. It isn't red listed at the moment, but, but um, <clears throat> uh, it, it, in Britain, it, sh it, it is a really rare species. There is probably a bit more of it in Ireland, uh, just for indications. Um, and it appears to prefer calcareous water. So if you're finding an, an intermediate group in a calcareous fen, then I would say definitely it's worth checking uh, because there's quite a strong possibility that it would be uh, intermediate sense of strict. Um, and Bremii, uh, currently only known from the New Forest in Hampshire, just the one site. <coughs> Uh, all three of these, I would say it's worth sending them to the, the, the referee, um, uh, the BSBI referee, to get uh, to, to have confirmation, just so that we know that, that, that they are good ver verified records, because there have been considerable problems uh, with uh, the identification. Um, partly people using the vegetative as characters that are mentioned in some of the books. Um, partly it's historical, less clarity as to what the characters for separating them are. Um, uh, and another issue that has caused problems uh, is that there has been a, a discontinuity uh, when uh, records are transferred from different recording systems. Uh, there hasn't been quite a good matchup. So a number of records for say Valgaris, uh, which were at, uh, originally recorded as the aggregate, have suddenly appeared in the records as a uh, Valgaris sensu strictu. Um, uh, and that uh, has caused problems and you've had to go back through the records and say, well, no, this, this was actually recorded as Valgaris ag and, and sort of change the records. So, uh, as I say, well worth getting confirmation from the referees for, for, the, for these three species. Uh, Preservation is a problem because the characters that uh, um, for separating particularly the segregates are ones that don't preserve well in press material. So press specimens, unfortunately, you're usually stuck with distinguishing them to the aggregate species. Um, and it's difficult to take them further. Uh, flowers, the best thing is to take is to actually photograph them uh, when they're fresh. Or, uh, and to uh, preserve them, to preserve them in alcohol. Uh, and uh, uh, if you're gonna be looking at bladder hairs, then they, again, they need to be preserved in alcohol, which is uh, complicated. It's a more difficult storage system. You've got to top up the alcohol at intervals and, um, uh, and they're much more bulky. So uh, it is a problem, but if, if you're making good vaccine material, particularly for these, rarer species, then I would say uh, you need to preserve them in, in alcohol rather than press. Them. Um, so it remains to say, just the best thing is to go out, have a look, see what you can find. Uh, I'm told, my spies are telling me that it's actually been, uh, it's actually quite a good year for flowering um, uh, bladderworts. Uh, uh, I think the sort of drier conditions, uh, because in fact, if you go to Scandinavia, these species that don't flower terribly well in Britain and Ireland, 
uh, flower much better because the, the, the uh, climate is more continental um, and, uh, uh, and they flower and that's why the, the, um, a lot of the taxonomic work has been done particularly on Scandinavian material uh, more, than, more than in Britain. So I would say just get, get out there and have a look, see what you can find. Um, and it remains just to thank again the Botanical Society of Britain and Ireland and uh, for, for organising this webinar and the National Parks and Wildlife Service uh, for, uh, for their sponsorship.